Another day, another recap. The action thriller movie we'll be dissecting today goes by the name The Cold Light of Day. There will be some spoilers ahead, so watch out and enjoy the recap. The movie opens up with a man landing in Spain and discovering his luggage is stuck in San Francisco. He continues through the airport, and we are introduced to Martin and his son Will. Martin is so happy to see his son and they go for a drive to their vacation. Martin gets annoyed at Will's phone constantly ringing. But eventually, Will is reunited with his mother Lori and then his brother Josh and lastly Josh's partner, Dara. The family that night have a dinner with each other and reminisce over the old days. Lori is so happy the family is back together again, but Will gets up to answer another phone call. He tries setting up a meeting with the person on the phone but then says he understands and ends the call. When he returns to the table, he finds the family all laughing at him and he somewhat snaps. He tells them he might not be able to stay the week and says he just discovered his company is bankrupt. He storms off and sits on the rocks alone. He soon joins his father and the two men have a heart to heart with each other. The next day, the family set out to see. Will is distracted by his phone and his father screams at him to help. After a bit, they drop the anchor and Will jumps back on his phone and his father gives him another task. Will is supposed to handle the helm though, his phone is still causing him to sink away from reality, and problematically Dara gets hurt. Martin tosses Will's phone in the water and Josh has to break up a fight. Will then decides to head back to shore to get some antiseptic cream and a small break. Martin in the meanwhile is annoyed at the people constantly circling his boat. He finds it to be odd but Will continues through the town and gets back to the water. He asks randoms where his boat went and seems to have lost his family. With no other option he heads to the top of a mountain and sees the boat. He dives into the water and climbs onto it but finds it to be quiet. He is very confused and starts panicking and discovers it's completely empty. He immediately heads to the police station where the officers are immersed in a game of cards. The captain then shows his face and when Will says his name, the captain runs off and then returns saying to take him to the boat. The cops then escort Will to a man that knows Will by name and says to follow him to his family. Will feels something is weird and the cops try to grab him. But he manages to evade them, and a chase ensues, Will steals one of the cop cars and speeds away. They follow him onto the street and ram him into a nearby tree. They yank him from the car and start whacking him when his dad arrives out of nowhere and takes care of the police. When more come, he deals with them then attends to his son. Martin takes him for a drive and says he doesn't know where the rest of the family are, as he was also taken at gunpoint. He confesses he lied to his family about how he was working at the embassy, he is actually part of a special branch in the CIA. His phone suddenly rings. Martin then tells a woman he needs to see her right now. The duo pulls up to a house and Martin prepares himself for the battle ahead. He makes another call and requests help before getting into a car and driving off. When they stop the duo stays seated inside and Will is not happy his father kept this secret from him. A woman then arrives and Martin tells him to sit tight and says he is proud of him before jumping out. He then links up with Carrick. He tells her that the same guys they took the briefcase from have kidnapped his family. Martin wants the briefcase back, but Carrick says she can't do it but will see what she can do. Martin then walks back to his car and... He drops dead on the ground and Will can do nothing for him. His phone rings and Will quickly takes it and the gun as he is shot at. The shooter approaches him, but Will runs for his life as a van simultaneously pulls up and deals with the lifeless body. Will sprints through random streets and doesn't stop. The phone continues ringing and when he answers the man says he has 21 hours to capture Tom. But Will continues running as his attacker chases him. A cop sees him and stops him, but the cop drops on the floor and Will shoots at his attacker. More cops chase him and he is forced to continue to escape which eventually leads him into a park. A horse even joins the pursuit, but Will gets away and goes to the nearest bathroom to have a breather. He heads back into public and is quite distraught. He hides his pistol and heads to the American Embassy. He jumps inside it and is immediately taken to a detective. But problematically, the detective does not believe Will's story until a phone rings. When he answers he tells Will someone needs to speak to him. Carrick sees him and tells Will to jump in. He feels quite trapped but eventually listens to the woman and gets in. She privately escorts him from the embassy and wants to know who his father has been speaking to. He tells her to pull over as he's feeling sick and stands on the side of the road. But he quickly takes off and Carrick tells her guard to let him be and they'll sort him out later. Some while later, Will jumps on a bus and goes through his dad's phone. There are only two names on it and an unknown caller calls. The man on the other side puts Will's mother on the phone and she asks for Martin. The bad news is broken to her, and the man says he wants the briefcase for his family's safety and gives him a location to be at. 
Will then calls up Caldera, and a woman answers and gives him a location. He heads to the man's office but finds a receptionist there who's acting weird. But Carrick's bodyguard then appears and Will tackles and manages to stab him. But a fight ensues until the bodyguard finally stops moving and Lucia, Diego's niece, is frightened and screams at Will until he explains his circumstance. She is stressed and the duo agree to help each other find her uncle Diego. She takes Will to her uncle's house and they both walk inside to discover him dead. Will walks around the building until he discovers both his father's killer Gorman and Carrick in the room. Carrick says she killed Martin because he wanted to give something back to their enemies and it was a matter of national security. Will's family have been captured by those same enemies. As Gorman reaches for his gun, Lucia then walks in guns blazing, and all four fire shots at each other but all miss. The duo head upstairs and run for it as their intruders chase them. Will then uses an electrical wire to tie Lucia. Gorman then tries breaking down the door and Lucia is being roped down. But a bullet coming Will's way almost makes Lucia drop to the ground. She is then taken to safety and Will fires at Gorman. But now that he's stuck on the roof he comes up with a plan. He decides to jump off the building with a wire attached. And fortunately enough the satellite getting stuck saves him. But Gorman shoots at it and causes him to fall a few stories down. He is still alive though, and Lucia comes to his rescue on a bike as Carrick comes after them. Will discovers he's been shot and a Range Rover almost rams into them from behind. The duo stack it and a small crowd surround them, and Carrick cannot fire a shot which allows them to escape once more. Lucia takes Will to see her friend who can help him. Eventually, they carry Will to a room and a couple other people join him. They hold him down to close up the wound, but as they do so, he passes out. Some while later he finally wakes up and Lucia gets to questioning him. She wants to know why he has a photo of Martin in his phone, and he explains that that's his father. She gets really emotional as she knew him quite well. The duo then heads to the station to make their way to their kidnappers. Will then learns and gets cut when he discovers that Lucia is also Martin's daughter. He isn't too happy but I guess he just discovered he had a stepsister. After leaving he tells Lucia he is going alone, and she tells him where to find her after he's done. In a busy square, Will looks around for the kidnappers but a man approaches and says to follow him. They walk through a quiet street and into a car. There, the man behind him asks where his father is, and Will avoids the question and is then put in a headlock and passes out. He is soon awakened to getting smashed and he tells the people his father is dead. The man then opens up a laptop and tells Will that two months ago, one of his agents went to send sensitive intel on their country, and a rogue CIA agent appeared. And it was Martin who killed his agent and stole the briefcase. The two men then release Will and show him his family. They say that Carrick is selling the briefcase and he wants to use Will as bait to find her before that. He also mentions the only thing protecting Carrick from killing his family is him. The men dump Will in the middle of nowhere, and he heads to find Lucia. He finds her inside a club and tells her everything he has learnt. Lucia's friends Maximo also says there's a few people staking out the place and the group make a plan. Inside the club, one of the security approaches Gorman, but he takes out the guard and Maximo hits him from behind. The guard then pops back up and tasers Gorman. They tie him up and begin to extract information from him. Will wants to know where the deal is taking place and cracks him. He gets quite physical and beats Gorman continuously. Will then tells Maximo to give him car keys and he wants to accidentally let Gorman loose so they can follow him. And as you'd expect, Gorman manages to break himself free and escape. The duo sees him, and Gorman hijacks a car and takes off. The two follow him, and Will's family's kidnappers also see this. Gorman ends up linking with Carrick and they both jump into another vehicle. As they take off Will follows them and stops when they stop. He gets out of the car and goes to the car park. He tells Lucia to wait in the car and he hears Carrick talking in the distance. Lucia though is told by a man to come hide in his car, and she listens to him. Another man tells Will his team will take it from here but as he makes a noise Carrick and her men use this to betray their buyers and kill them. All teams begin firing at Will, and Gorman takes the briefcase and drives away with it. Will goes down the stairs to catch him, and as an agent shoots at Gorman Will jumps into the back of the car and Gorman is shot as Will jumps out and Lucia crushes him. Will helps Lucia out, and Gorman cannot believe that of every adversary he's ever faced it was Will who killed him. Carrick then comes flying in and she stops to grab the briefcase. She looks around to see her partner dead and slowly gets back into the car. As she drives away the duo get into their own car and follow her. This time Will is driving and both cars pull in and out of lanes. She tries losing him by taking a red light but it does not work. They drive through a park and the Range Rover chomps tables and chairs and does every maneuver possible to lose the duo. She starts firing away but misses, she goes down multiple stairs and they continue after her. They go into another street and Carrick gets stuck in traffic. 
Will and Lucia come from the side and speed directly at Carrick. They smack her but end up going through a store. All three are still alive and Carrick gets out of the car and a gunfight ensues. Will shoots to give himself time to hijack a car and escape. Carrick is annoyed and decides to finish them off. She speeds towards them and shoots at the same time. Will rams her but the two cars start playing dodge em cars with each other. They collide until Will intentionally causes both cars to flip over. Carrick is the first one to get out and Will is quite injured. He tries crawling his way out of the car and Carrick mocks him. Will tries grabbing his father's gun and Carrick finds it so cute. She goes to kill him but is instead shot dead. The kidnappers and their agents arrive and secure the briefcase and hide the body. On the drive home they hold true to their word and the man tells Will that his father would be proud of him. His family is finally set free and Will unties them all. After some time the CIA tell Will he's done so much for them and wasn't even involved. They offer him a job to replace his father in essence. Will thanks him and walks inside the hospital with his family. He introduces Josh to his long lost sister and even his mum gets to sit down with her. That's the end, I do want to thank you all for staying and thank you all so much for 100,000 subscribers. See you on the next one.